Hananiah or Zephaniah, a Negro Israelite, a son of Cush. Zephaniah means Yahuwah hides. Now, Zephaniah's father was named Cushi. And Cushi, as an adjective, that means black. In both Hebrew, it means black. And in Greek, it means black. Now, Cushi is an affectionate term for a Negro of Ethiopian origin, derived from the biblical land of Cush. And it is an area that was alongside the Niger River. And if you actually look at ancient maps in 1736 and ancient maps in 1747 of Africa, you'll find a country called Negro Land and the Kingdom of Judah. This is of utmost importance for us to understand how Yahweh is gathering the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. Because what actually happened is in this Gulf of Guinea in Western Africa, European slave ship holders, they were Ashkenazi slavers. They were of European origin. They were Western Mongols that had infiltrated Britain and mainly Portugal. They were the Ashkenazi slavers. They were wealthy merchant slavers that went down to the coast of Guinea. They employed Mohammedan trappers, Islamics, to go into the kingdom of Judah and Negro land and take the royal house of Judah captive in slave ships, as it's recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, and bring them over to America, and they became known today as what? African Americans. Who is trying to enslave the African Americans more than any people? Democratic socialism, which is why I am a huge supporter of Blexit and Candace Owens and those that are bringing the awareness. Now, Blexit means what? It's African Americans or blacks that are exiting the Democratic Party because they've been awakened to see that the Democratic Party are the biggest slavers and always have been in the USA. So Candace Owens is doing an amazing job with Blexit, blacks exiting the Democratic Party, realizing that, of course, democratic socialism is, of course, all part of this globalist agenda of what we need to expose. So all that to say this, Zephania, of course, a Negro Israelite, more complex than what Bible scholars would just like to rush through because it is not politically expedient to them today. We're going to see, of course, this area of which Zephania, this area, of course, of which we're talking about, Negro land and the kingdom of Judah. If you were to look at an African map today, the kingdom of Judah right on the Gulf of Guinea appears today in present day, in the present day Republic of Benin and the nation of Togo. So if you look on a map today at the nation of Togo and the present Republic of Benin, that is where the kingdom of Judah and Negro land was. So this is very important to our history as Israel. And many will go, well, you can't say the word Negro. I find that so offensive. I just think that that's culturally insensitive, Matthew. I'm talking biblical anthropology. Grow up, snowflake. You are not special. You are not beautiful. You are not a unique snowflake. You are the same decaying organic matter as everything else. Give me a break. People today 
are whitewashed walls, are they not? Literally snowflakes. Cush is one of the sons of Ham, who is the son of Noah. Now Cush, therefore, is Noah's grandson. The territory named after Cush is called the land of Cush. And it's actually found in Genesis chapter 2, verse 13, where the, cu- the word Cush is listed as Ethiopius or Ethiopia in the Septuagint, the LXX, which is the same word, Cush, that's used in other verses in the Bible. You can find it in Isaiah 11:11, 11, 11, and it comes across as Ethiopius in the Septuagint, Isaiah 45, verse 15, Ethiopian, and of course, we just studied it, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 7, Ethiopian. So what we're talking about here is Negro as a anthropological, biblical term because I want to expose democratic socialism and slavery as it was then, so it is today, which is why I'm a big supporter of Candace Owens and Blexit, blacks exiting the Democratic Party. It's good for Israel. It's good for you, and it's good for the prophecies of the Bible because Yahuwah says that he will gather all 12 tribes and the Ashkenazi are not one of them. Okay? But those taken captive from Negro land along the river Niger in the area that I've just located, that's very important that we understand what we're talking about. So, for Zephania's father to be named Cushy means that he was black, Negro, African, a regal Negro from Negro land or the kingdom of Judah. We have ourselves here an amazing black prophet anointed to warn Yahweh's people about his wrath on them for their sin. And of course, this black-skinned prophet is part of the lineage of Messiah. Now, Zephaniah's father was Cushy. His grandfather was, it says right there, Gedaliah. And Gedaliah, his great-grandfather was Amariah. And Hezekiah the king was his great-great-grandfather. So the dark-skinned Negro, Negro trait is woven into what? into the genealogy because Hezekiah is one of the kings in the genealogy of Yahushua in Matthew chapter 1. Now, no funky monks would have been preaching this to you, and you're not going to hear this in your local Baptist church because they want to keep you down and enslaved, regardless of the color of your skin. But Yahweh says that we are Joseph's coat, a multi colored ethnic group that is being taken out of the nations regardless because the ones that want to enslave us are not particularly caring what color our skin is they are the globalists and they are Ashkenazi slavers in their origin and they will employ the Mohammedan to do their dirty work just as they did in the 1700s they are doing today, which is why it is so important when you get blacks raising up like Candace Owens waking up and making a stand and why Blexit is so important in this country. So important. Anyway, let's continue on. We have the regal, regal, excuse me, regal Negro connection to the house of Judah and Yahushua himself. Now, we know King Hezekiah had more interaction with Africa than any other king of Judah. Hezekiah married an African woman who then gave birth to Zedekiah's grandfather. So, to find a Negro as one of the minor prophets and of regal status means that black Africans have contributed what? Hugely! 
to the total development of ancient Israel in a way that modern history does not want to admit. Because modern history is fabricated history. It is, a his it is not historical truth. And we have to look at historical truth. So democratic socialists are enemies of Israel, always have been, always will be, the biggest slavers, of course. Zephaniah was thus of royal descent, a regal Negro. He lived in Jerusalem since he describes Jerusalem in, in quite some detail, as we'll see in this opening chapter. This prophetic book, of course, bears his name. He mentions the fish gate and the second quarter in verse 10 of chapter 1. So the prophetic mantle that is upon this prophet spanned the reign of King Josiah in 640 to 609 before the common era. This is the last voice of a prophet. Think about it. The last voice of a prophet that Israel had heard was the voice of the prophet Isaiah in 701 before this guy came along. So they were really ready to hear some prophetic news. It just so happened that it wasn't feel-good news. And you and I, we need to hear some prophetic news. And it's not necessarily going to make you feel all warm and cozy, but that's not my job. That's not the job of the words of Yahuwah. The job of the words of Yahuwah are to wake you up, backslider. Backslider.